Hello, Avondale parents, uh, staff, students. Uh, it's Mr. Seal. It is the 15th of September. Uh, I was going to have a live uh, principal Q&A uh, this evening, but um, I got the most recent COVID vaccination, the Omicron one yesterday, and it has given me a whooping today. And that is spelled W-H-U-P-P-I-N apostrophe just to tell you how strong the whooping has been. Uh, so uh, I am definitely not uh, up to speed today, but I did want to, uh, I, I was able to get the, the feedback that um, you gave in the PTA meeting and wanted to give uh, um, some answers to other questions that uh, you probably have. And so um, that's what I'm gonna do in this, this short video. This is in lieu of the uh, Q&A and um, kind of want to address some of those things. And I hope that this is sufficient. Um, uh, and, you know, and of course, always, if you have specific questions to your student um, or like to your child's teacher in that relationship, then uh, you can always just send me an email and we will get to the bottom of it. Um, let me get uh, my, my, my info here from the, uh, the meeting and old man reading glasses here. Um, okay, so, so a couple of uh, um, uh, questions. Um, so they were talking about intercession and e-learning. Uh, intercession information is actually already posted on the school district's website, and we're putting it on our website as well. There's a QR code as well as a link, so you can go and uh, sign up your child for that. And that is going to be, I'm looking at my calendar, uh, October 2nd, uh, uh, excuse me, October 3rd through the 7th. And um, it'll be from eight until one, like it always is. Uh, and we will have uh, a focus on, on the upper grades, a real focus on ACAP. And we're gonna be using a lot of data to determine the best ways in which to uh, support all of the different kids who are able to come. And of course, this is all voluntary. I mean, if you've got you know, fall break plans for that first week of uh, October, then, you know, there's no, uh, you know, by all means, you know, enjoy, uh, enjoy the week. But um, that's when we'll be having intercession. And for those of you who are new to the school, the way we do intercession is that we group kids not by grade, but by uh, um, reading and math levels based on the data that we have. So that the, uh, the teacher who is working with them, and it's one of our teachers, it's, you know, certified teacher, um, is working with kids who are right around the same level. And uh, depending on that level, there are certain programs that the district wants us to use to help strengthen those reading and math skills. And we'll have a couple of electives, we'll have PE, all that kind of stuff. And uh, maybe a couple of surprises, uh, we'll see. Um, who is it for? Technically it's for any Avondale student, um, but there is a focus um, more on some of those kids who need some extra support. Uh, that does, I'm not trying to discourage anyone who um, uh, just wants their child to experience some enrichment or whatever, because every child will gain something uh, from intercession week. Um, as far as the e-learning day, um, I'm still just as much in the dark as you are. I have not been told anything. Now, on the 21st, that's next Wednesday, I have my monthly district principals meeting. And let's hope that I receive some information about the e-learning day at that time. Um, and as soon as I do, I will disseminate that information through the teachers, maybe a flyer home. That's usually maybe the most consistent way of getting information to, uh, to parents um, and let y'all know about how that will, how that will work. Um, one of the big question marks we have is that the IT department in Birmingham City took all of our laptops to uh, clean them up. Um, and we have not gotten them back yet, which would really make an e-learning day difficult. So, uh, we're still, and that might be why I haven't gotten any info yet. Um, this is something they were supposed to have done in the summer. And I know that there were some personnel changes and they were, they're trying to get to them. So that's kind of where we are with that. So, uh, no answer to that yet. Um, uh, there's a question about, um, um, an open house or curriculum night in October. I think that's a great idea. And I'm uh, gonna be meeting with uh, some PTA folks to try to figure out kind of the best way to do that. If you would, if you could, if you're watching this and you're like, well, hey, I'm, 
I, I tell you what I'd like to see, then um, by all means, shoot me an email and say, uh, hey, I watched the video. And uh, here's, a, here's something that would be nice to have at, uh, at an open house or at a curriculum night. Uh, now we already know that on um, uh, Thursday, October 28th, my calendar is right there, that's why I keep staring at it, um, that uh, that's going to be the fall festival. So, uh, and that's for, for all kids and whatnot. So uh, it's also gonna be an art night. So it's gonna, be, uh, it's gonna be a fantastic evening here at Avondale Elementary. Um, so we already know that we've got that in October. So, um, but the nine weeks will end at the end of September and report cards will come home uh, the week of the um, uh, 10th of October. So um, that's, that's, that might be a good time that week to maybe have something so that uh, if you've got questions about things, you know, but anyway, um, if you've got some, some suggestions on how we could best do something like that, then please don't hesitate to let me know or to communicate to the PTA officers and uh, uh, they could pass that along to me. Um, okay, so another question, can the PTA provide a communication volunteer? Um, I love volunteers and we are working even more with um, the PTA to create uh, more volunteer opportunities. I sent a survey to the staff uh, uh, towards the end of, um, what month are we in? August, uh, it was towards the end of August and asked them what sorts of volunteer support they would like because not every teacher wants the same thing. And so I compiled all of that and I gave it to the PTA because they also were getting information from uh, teachers and from parents. So all of that stuff's gonna be compiled so that we can um, give you some, some real uh, opportunities. And it could be as small as reading to a class, you know, once a week or as large as, you know, I wanna help make copies or I wanna, um, you know, come, you know, give the teachers a break and help cover lunch for a duty-free lunch for teachers or whatever it is. Um, so, um, but that, uh, that, so we've got uh, that going on. As far as a communication volunteer, definitely something for uh, me to investigate further. That would be terrific. Um, let's see, uh, what donations and needs do we have? Um, still trying to uh, piece that together. Um, the, uh, the school system is, is trying its best to provide different types of support. And, um, it's interesting, um, the kind of support that we really need at Avondale is less about materials and more about um, uh, time. And, uh, you know, folks who um, can work with a couple of students um, will volunteer to, um, uh, you know, help a teacher, you know, with some intervention or um, help you know, students while the teacher is pulling kids over to the table or um, things like that. So, um, and there are obviously some huge ticket items that in uh, Mr. Seal's fantasy world, uh, he would want for the school, but um, a little more than a, uh, a bake sale is going to achieve. So um, I'm trying to figure out how to temper my uh, dreams with, uh, um, the realities. So, uh, but that, that I'm, I'm working on a list right now to get to the PTA so that they can disseminate to members and talk to parents about that. Um, and there's one more question on here. Um, can Avondale expand to a K-8? Um, and uh, um, that's, that's adorable that, uh, that uh, y'all would want to do that. And uh, I'm assuming that that's a, uh, validation of what we're doing here at Avondale. Um, uh, there is no doubt about it that uh, we are um, becoming one of the elite schools in, uh, in the district. And I actually had a, a discussion with a, um, a state representative um, who said that uh, because of what we're doing here at Avondale, uh, Avondale is viewed uh, by the city as the, uh, the great hope for elementary schools in the Birmingham city system. And um, that's a tremendous amount of pressure, uh, but you don't get that kind of, uh, you don't 
get that kind of faith uh, in your what you're doing unless you're doing something that a lot of people see as doing well. And so the idea that we would uh, expand to a K-8 is uh, certainly something that um, I will say this, uh, the PTA asking the question, this would not be the first time that I have been asked that question. Um, and so uh, I'm certainly not in a position to, uh, to make it no, sort of, <laughs> If y'all think I have the ability to make that kind of decision, you have grossly overestimated my uh, my influence um, in the system. But um, uh, so I can't say yay or nay. Um, I will say this: that if the proper um, components were in place, uh, that is not something that I am averse to. Um, I know that there is a, a concern about the number of kids who leave Avondale, but who do not go to Putnam or who do not even stay in the school system. They go to private schools, they go to charter schools, or they actually just move out of the city entirely. Um, so I know that that is a concern and uh, not just with me, but people who are at a higher pay grade than I am. And so, um, uh, certainly can't say, oh, yeah, we're doing that. Um, but I will say that um, this is not the first time that that um, not so far fetched um, dream has been uh, has been verbalized. So um, more on that uh, later. Um, so there were some concerns I wanted to kind of address here. Um, and uh, uh, I did, there's some things in here about um, checking out kids and concerns with security at checkout, IDs, things like that. And um, after this meeting took place, I sent home some updated uh, safety regulations, which are trying to tighten up a little bit on that. Uh, obviously, logistically and architecturally, we have some uh, um, uh, gaps, I guess is the best way to say it, uh, in how we're able to do things. That lobby is wide open. Um, and uh, I've been hearing since I've been here that architects are coming to, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, redesign the lobby so that there's some sort of waiting area. I don't know. Um, I, I think that's right up there with we're going to, you know, redo your your playground. Um, they keep saying it, but I don't I don't see it happening anytime soon. Um, but uh, that's that's uh, where we are with that. Concerns also I see on here uh, have to do with communication and the website being a little difficult. I'll, I'll look into the website. Um, we probably don't utilize that as often as, as much as we should. Um, so I will look into that. And uh, when it comes to communication, I would love some feedback that's a little more specific on that. And I don't say that, you know, uh, defensively. I say that uh, uh, legitimately because um, I, I try a variety of communication modes um, so that uh, however parents best receive their info, I'm trying to, um, to tap into that. And so... Um, Sometimes I'll have teachers pass along something. Sometimes I'll send a robo text with a link. Um, sometimes we'll send something home on paper with every child, put it in the backpack. Please, you know, show this to your parents. Um, but uh, I would love some suggestions on how to, uh, it says here streamlining. And so I'd love some suggestions on that. That'd be great. I'm always open to stuff like that. Um, uh, let's see. Um, uh, well, actually, school communication is on here a good bit for concerns and feedback. So, uh, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to put that at the top of the, the list there of things to look into. Um, there are a couple of things on here. Uh, it says lack of access to the school, and I'm not sure what that means. Um, obviously, for safety concerns, we want very little access to the school, you know, one way in and, and, and one way out. Um, but if it means like ways in which to... Uh, um, you know, come in the building and participate in things, then, um, then I think we kind of talked about that with the volunteer stuff. Um, and uh, now it says back door wide open. Um, we do sometimes have the back door propped open. Now you got to realize that all of our gates are locked. Um, the only thing about the back door is that it locks. And so if a child wants to come in and use the restroom, if they're on the playground or if they're out in PE on the fields out here, then they're hitting a buzzer and it's, it's all day long, them needing to be buzzed in um, to get water, to use the restroom. Um, and so we will prop the door sometimes so that it's they can come in and out 
um, a little more easily. Um, and so, uh, but do know that we're, you know, uh, we would love for there to be an, a, a better way to do that. Um, there's no way though to unlock the door. Um, so it's just, it's just open. Um, and so uh, I'm looking at that. Uh, see on here, test scores. I should mention this. Um, uh, our test scores are uh, not great. I mean, they're not something to brag about. Um, the growth is something to brag about because we, um, and where we are in relation to the other schools in the district is something to brag about. Uh, we began last year with our iReady reading and math as having the highest, highest level of students who are proficient the highest percentage of students who are proficient in both of those subjects um, in the fall benchmark, the winter benchmark, and in the final benchmark um, in May. So not only did we start high, we continued to grow and we stayed high. And the only schools who had better scores than us um, uh, were the magnet schools. Um, and at times, Oliver, um, they're doing some things over at Oliver now, um, which is why Putnam has the, uh, the Avondale and Oliver feed into Putnam. So there's there's the opportunity and potential for Putnam to be uh, quite a uh, quite a force if if all the uh, stars were aligned. Um, but uh, you know, doing better than all the others, and um, our ACAP scores uh, were also. Um, some of the top scores in the district, and our growth was uh, considerable. Um, now, I will say this, you know, data is one of those things you can manipulate. Uh, so when people brag about growth uh, from last year to this year, you got to remember last year was COVID year, and so everybody's scores were super low. So I'm much more interested to see how we do this year um, in 2023 compared to 2022 as opposed to 22 compared to COVID-21. Um, and, and I'm not being cynical, but just being realistic. And so, uh, so our scores in relation to other schools in the district are, uh, you know, more than impressive. Our scores are far higher than the system average. Uh, but at the same time, that's um, considering that the school system scores are below the state average. Um, bragging about being the highest in Birmingham City is, uh, um, I don't know, uh, bragging about uh, being the, you know, the, I don't know, I was trying to think of an analogy, but my brain is all stuffed up. Um, and even we've got, we, we are um, encouraged, but not satisfied. So that's the way I'm going to put it. Uh, there are a couple of things on here I can't really uh, um, do anything about the school board. Um, trust me, if I could uh, influence that. Uh, um, and reputation of BCS, also something I don't really have control over. What I do have control over and what we all have control over is the way that Avondale is perceived. And um, the uh, and here's just, you know, also something else that I heard uh, yesterday. Uh, one of my teachers was telling me that um, a lot of her teacher friends, um, people who teach in the district, uh, have been uh, talking to her about wanting to send their kids here. Now, that's an endorsement right there. When you've got educators choosing a school, that is that is a big deal. You know, and so that that to me is high praise. Um, but again, we are we are our, our um, trajectory is upward, but we are not satisfied with where we are. Um, I know that there is some heartburn in regards to uh, the Walker situation. And uh, um, I, th I think if this PTA meeting had come after uh, the Walker announcement. I don't think the things we love, that list would be nearly as long. I think there'd be a lot of uh, feedback um, about that. I know that that's causing some heartburn with several folks. Here's the problem that we were having. Um, we have a lot of folks who don't want to be in the carpool line. And so they're parking right there, some of whom are not even in the Avondale zone. And uh, we had gotten to a point where uh, we had kids just standing there, parents hadn't shown up yet. And so we have to bring kids back to be in the carpool line. Uh, kids who are like, we can't monitor, like 
which cars they're getting into. Uh, I know that the transportation has said on several occasions it was difficult for the buses to navigate getting out because there were so many cars. Um, and so, uh, and it's only a matter of time before folks in the neighborhood um, complain too. That's why we don't have the buses in the back here because um, apparently before I got here, there was some neighborhood backlash about the, uh, the way traffic was kind of jammed up. Um, so, uh, you know, this is something that um, uh, teachers, the system, um, things that we just had to kind of look at and a decision was made. And I know it's not popular. Um, I don't really get paid to be popular, but um, I do uh, I do have to look at safety first. And part of the thing with that is I know that there are some parents who um, have some work uh, constraints. The only thing is that if I allow it to occur for even one parent, then every single other parent's gonna be like, so uh, it's cool if I just park over there too, right? And that way I don't have to sit in line and I can get out of here at 3.02 as opposed to 3.15. Oh, okay. And we'd have no way of being able to say, well, you can, but you can't. Um, and so that's why the decision was made. And I want to be uh, fair. Uh, I want to be equitable. If someone has an idea on how to better you know, handle that, then that's great. Uh, we are restricted in our, um, in the design of the parking lot. I mean, there's one way in and one way out and um, there's only two lanes. And so, uh, you know, we don't exactly have like an express lane or anything like that. We just kind of have to work with what we have. I will tell you this, um, the biggest thorn in Mr. Seal's side above anything else is dismissal. And there's something about dismissal where my mood shifts. Um, I just, it, it is a, a never ending source of consternation with me. And so um, I feel your pain and this is from, uh, you know, a different angle, but uh, um, I wish that there were some easy answers. It is definitely a, um, a conundrum. So um, if anybody has like a, a great idea um, on how, you know, we could, do some things better than I would love to hear it. I would love to hear it. Uh, part of it is person power. You know, we lost eight units um, after last year. And so I've got to have a certain number of teachers who are watching the kids waiting to be picked up. I've got a couple of teachers who work the after school care program, so they're not available to do anything. Um, I've got to have a certain number of teachers who are helping students into their cars so that we can do that safely. Um, and we have Ms. Lavender getting names. She's sending them to me. I'm calling them out. I mean, there's a there's a process and we're pretty much stretched about as thin as, as we can as we can be. We've, we're utilizing every person in the building. And so that's where trying to improve upon things gets difficult because uh, we just don't have the staff that we, uh, that we had last year. Um, well, in terms of quantity, quality, it's exceptional, but we, we just have fewer numbers of uh, staff members. So, um, so I know that that is, uh, um, that has probably made uh, me the, um, the object of scorn amongst um, um, parents and uh, you know, sure my name has been um, um, really bandied about negatively at the Triangle Park. It's pretty sure that's what's going on and that's okay. Um, but again, if, if you, if you have any suggestions and I really, I'm really not being passive aggressive when I say that, then I am always open to them. Um, so, you know, um, food for thought. Uh, okay. So that's uh, kind of where I'm going to leave it right here. Uh, so uh, here are some of my, um, uh, my action steps, uh, getting information about the e-learning day, there's one, getting information about volunteering, that's two, and uh, finalizing what we're going to be doing about intercession, that's three. And uh, some of the other questions are a little more further down. I'm also uh, at the top of my list looking at better communicating from, uh, from school to home. And, and all that kind of stuff. So uh, those are my action steps. And your action step is that if you do have suggestions, email me rseal at bhm.k12.al.us, or you can just go to the website, click on the administrator thing, and my link is hyper right there, and you just click onto it and immediately can um, set up a, a message to send to me.
And so that'd be great. Uh, when you do that, make sure you identify who your child is. So I kind of know what grade and um, uh, kind of what perspective uh, you're coming from. So, all right, great. Well, uh, if they're in, um, uh, that's kind of all that I have. And I hope everybody has a great weekend.